Hi everybody. This is the last of the introductory section on medical device technologies and what I'm going to talk about in the next section is the impact that the global trends and challenges are having on the Irish medical device technology sector. Okay, so the medtech sector in Ireland, uh, I suppose you could say, is reasonably new. It, it grew from an embryonic stage in the 1970s, and it has become a key component in the development of the Irish economy. It's rapidly moved from assembly and low-cost manufacturing, which is how it started, to a more technology-driven manufacturing uh, base. However, uh, in the last number of years, uh, the medtech sector has seen additional higher value added functions uh, in areas such as R&D, sales and marketing and shared service centers. Um, so really, that is, is, is where the sector is headed right now in Ireland. It's in the, 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 the value added functions such as R&D and sales and marketing. And I'm going to explore that a little bit more in the next few slides. But let's just look at some uh, facts and figures. Uh, first of all, so this is from the the IDA. Um, and if we look at the output uh, from the medtech sector in Ireland, so 50% of ventilators that are used in acute hospitals worldwide are manufactured in Ireland. 33% uh, of the world's contact lenses are manufactured in Ireland. And 30 million people with diabetes use Irish made injectable devices. We're the second largest exporter of medtech products in Europe. This is after Germany and 12.6 uh, billion uh, exports are exported uh, annually in the medtech sector in Ireland. OK, so they are quite significant figures and we can get a feel now for, for the scale of the industry here. Uh, if we look at the second largest exporter from a, a quite a, a small company at the edge of Europe to be the second largest exporter of medtech products. So we'll get a sense there of, of how big this industry is here. Um, Oh, why is it uh, so big here? Well, we're going to talk about these centers of excellence in a minute, but in a small country that we have geographically, it's small in size, uh, we have a closely knit cluster of 300 plus medtech companies, and these are supported by uh, industry. And within the industry, there's active collaboration between companies. Um, they tend to, to cluster as well at uh, companies. Uh, uh, so there might be a multinational, several indigenous companies beside them, suppliers, contract manufacturers, etc. And there is active collaboration between these. Uh, with the highest number of personnel per capita employed in medtech in Europe, in the industry. And there are key areas of specific excellence uh, within our industry, including mechanical, electronic, materials, engineering and science specialists. The medtech industry is also supported by academic bodies. So the industry is closely integrated with key academic centers of excellence, including Quorum, um, which is the Center for Medical Devices uh, based in Galway in the west of Ireland, Amber's Materials Research, uh, Tyndall, National Institute in Cork, uh, BDI, SEAM and APT, which are other Enterprise Ireland funded centres of excellence which support the medtech uh, industry in terms of providing technical solutions, uh, R&D and innovative solutions to them. Uh, we have clinical support. So there's five clinical research facilities which support patient focused research. And it's ranked uh, number one globally for the exchange of technology and ideas. And uh, we have several government agencies um, involved in the medtech sector. We're the second largest exporter of medtech products in Europe, as I've mentioned, and we supply 95 of the world's top 100 countries ranked by GDP for medical devices. Uh, now, the other government agencies uh, that I will talk about, so there's significant funding from Science Foundation Ireland, um, IBEC, which is a business group, and the, and the arm of that, the IMDA, Irish Medical Device Association, which uh, support the medtech sector. And uh, we'll talk about their roles uh, later on and how they are supporting the sector. 
Uh, so what is actually being manufactured here? So MedTech in Ireland is involved in developing, manufacturing and supplying a diverse range of products. So these range from disposable plastic and wound care products to precision devices such as coronary stents. Uh, which we've talked about pacemakers, uh, microelectronic devices such as these uh, glucose monitors, uh, orthopedic implants, hips, knees, shoulders, etc., contact lenses, and uh, other diagnostic products. So uh, pretty pretty much everything that falls under the remit of a medical device um, is in some way connected to a med tech industry in Ireland. The sector employs over 29,000 people in Ireland, which is significant and is the second largest employer as well as the second largest exporter of medtech professionals in Europe. Uh, as I said, it's the largest exporter uh, with exports of 12.6 billion. Um, and significantly, 50% of our 400 plus medtech companies uh, based here are indigenous, meaning they're, they're homegrown companies. We have a strong services and contract research and manufacturing base here. So as I mentioned, the, the customers will tend to, the, the companies tend to cluster with a multinational and several contract research and contract manufacturing companies uh, nearby and service suppliers, etc. So 50% of the companies located here are in this business to business space, which is where the collaboration uh, comes in. And the Irish government has identified the medical technology sector as one of the key drivers of industrial growth for the future, and it provides a wide range of supports to encourage and foster this growth. We'll talk about them in a moment. 60% uh, of the companies in the sector are now involved in R&D work, which, as I mentioned, wasn't always the case. Uh, so it, there's been a rapid growth and a transformation in how the sector has conducted its business within Ireland to move towards R&D and innovation. And the indigenous companies here pl play a huge part in R&D. So as I said, there are government strategies in place to, to foster this sector. There's a vision to further develop Ireland's position as a global hub for medical devices. Uh, and with that, uh, in, the, in the last uh, two years, the government um, and, and there was, was industry funding as well of 245 million to establish five new world-class science foundation Ireland research centres. Uh, some of these uh, are, are the Four of them are listed here below that are of relevance. So Quorum, uh, we will interview the director of Quorum uh, later on in the course. Um, it was the Centre for Research in Medical Devices based in Galway. Um, Connect, Adapt and Lero are more into the um, ICT and linguistic side um, of the sector, which is becoming more and more important. So we will have a look at those as well later on. Uh, previously, government funding included capital funding of 7.5 million for a clinical research facility at University Hospital Galway. And now, as I said, uh, it, over half of the medtech companies in Ireland are indigenous. Uh, so meaning that they, they were probably spin-off companies from a, from a multinational, a small group of um, engineers or scientists uh, got together with a novel idea uh, and, and started their own company. And they've focused primarily in high value added areas um, and achieving particular product success in areas such as catheters and stents. Um, Galway in particular has become a, a, a central hub for cardiovascular uh, research for minimally invasive surgical procedures, uh, ventilation and respiratory care equipment is another arm that has been very successful here. I, uh, so Aerogen would be uh, one example of the uh, the respiratory care equipment. Let's change my color. Um, Harmac in, in Roscommon, Vistamed in Roscommon, um, Clearstream in Wexford, FilterTech, uh, Teleflex Medical, etc. Uh, these, I said, are just scratching the surface of the, the names and the types of indigenous companies that are here in Ireland. Um, so to get a full picture of it, um, the, the IMDA, which is the Irish Medical Device Association, have produced a map. 
Um, it's an interactive map, map. The link is here, and uh, and it, it, this is scaled out. But I suppose uh, these these bigger regions here, so Sligo is, is where we are here in the northwest, um, Castlebar, Westport, Galway, Major Hub, Dublin, Major Hub. So the, the these are the hubs that are in uh, in blue. Uh, if you're to to um, zoom in on these on this interactive maps you will see that the huge scale of activity that is happening in each of these regions so uh, I would encourage you to, to have a look at that map zoom in and out and, and, and it's an excellent map that, that will tell you the names of companies and what they are doing here We'll look at some recent major investment. Now, this goes to December 2015, uh, but I believe it, it is it is quite up to date uh, of what's been happening recently in terms of investment in the sector. Uh, this is an investment in, in some of the, the multinationals. Um, so Medtronic in Galway had a 13 million uh, euro investment in a new manufacturing facility. AbV in Sligo, uh, 40 million investment. Uh, Moss Vision, Roscommon, a new facility, uh, Bosch and Lam 75. So you can have, have a look down that list and see the, the scale of investment that is happening here at the moment. And in terms of employment in the sector, 57% uh, of personnel employed are employed as operatives, so over half. Um, but I suppose that pie chart has shifted significantly from where it may have been 10 years or 20 years ago, where um, maybe 75-80% were, were operatives. Uh, the roles are much more diverse now, so there is management, engineers, scientists, analysts, programmers, uh, technicians, administration, um, trades. Uh, medical auxiliary and sales and purchasing. So there's uh, a number of different uh, profiles now in employment. Um, so the key importance, if we go back to what the trends and challenges uh, were for the global industry, how does this impact the Irish industry? And most of the Irish companies are heavily dependent upon export of their products. As I said, we're a small nation, we have a small population. We're dependent to get our, our products elsewhere. Uh, and we have to compete with similar products which are sourced from alternative countries and when we looked at the global trends and challenges this was a challenge in terms of emerging markets so it's an essential requirement for irish medical device companies to remain very attuned to the trends in the global marketplace and and the way that we're doing this is as follows so uh, first of all it has been identified that there's a need for a steady supply of engineers and scientists and the government have uh, prioritized this the irish medical device association has um numerous upskilling programs on um it sligo delivers some of these programs uh, to the medtech sector to personnel in the medtech sector and to undergraduates as well am um, to ensure the skill set that is necessary uh, to, to work in these areas. Uh, collaboration and innovation is, is certainly very important um, and it's encouraged that companies are adaptable to changes in technology. Uh, so collaboration between companies, collaboration uh, between industry and academia, which is being done with these centers of excellence, with these science foundation centers of excellence um, and innovation. So letting maybe academic research drive some of the innovation, but having a strong collaboration with the industry as well. Um, we have a very strong reputation here uh, in Ireland in ICT, so information communication technology, and um, it, 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 it's another hub of activity that we have. So uh, there is a need to integrate ICT. Uh, we talked about these in the global trends and challenges. Um, there's consumerization of products and the value orientated customers. They customers will expect some degree of information technology now embedded in their medical devices and we have a real opportunity here to integrate ICT into our medical devices so um, so the focus is shifting towards more electronic medical devices which we have the skill set to do um, and we need to stay abreast of all the regulatory changes and stricter regulatory controls that are coming and we do have a lead in regulatory environment here so i think with these um 
uh, these objectives, then we can meet uh, and attune to the trends and challenges in the Irish industry. So I hope that section was informative. Um, I hope that we will interview some key personnel in the sector over the next few weeks. So stay tuned. Thank you. Bye bye.